Even though we're in the summertime, just imagine our planet is completely covered in ice. Scientists believe if you want the entire planet to be completely frozen, where even the oceans are completely frozen, the average temperature of the planet has to be minus 130 degrees Celsius. Some may say that this will never happen, but you have to know, this has happened twice in Earth's history. The last time our planet was completely frozen was about 635 million years ago. The scientific term for these eras are cryogenian. There's also an easier term that scientists use, snowball earth. The first question that comes to mind is that why is the entire planet covered in ice? The main problem are volcanoes. It is basically the volcano's fault. How can a geologist or a scientist realize that if an earth had an ice layer or what happened millions of years ago? The way scientists and geologists realize that this took place is because of drop stones that are found between the layers of planet earth. These stones were basically between the thick sheets of ice on the planet. But all of a sudden when the earth started to get warmer and the ice started melting and that created icebergs that sat in the middle of the ocean the same one that hit the Titanic and made it sink. In this era, icebergs weren't found everywhere. They were pretty much found all over the planet, even next to the equator. And since there were icebergs everywhere and between the ice there were rocks, after they melted, they would release these rocks and let it down into the layers of the history of the planet. And that's why you can find drop stones in the layers of the history of the planet. And you can find these everywhere. It is because of these drop stones that geologists and scientists can realize at what time an ice age was happening. When an ice age is over and the ice starts to melt, you can find a whole lot of icebergs in the oceans. Of course right now we have a lot of icebergs close to the north and south pole, but these aren't as big as the ones you would find 600 million years ago. Right now, next to the equator, the average temperature throughout the year is 31 degrees Celsius and an iceberg will not survive in this type of temperature. But that leaves one important question. Around 635 million years ago, when the entire planet was covered in ice, were there any animals on the planet? What happened to them? At this time, on the surface of the planet, there were no living organisms. But once you went through the ice sheet and entered the waters below it, you would find small microorganisms. These were not complicated creatures, they were basically bacteria and sponges. Scientists believe there was a chance on the surface of the ice there were bacteria living there. Because nowadays you could find bacteria living on the ice sheet in the North Pole. But what about the volcano? How did volcanoes create this ice age? You have to know that the planet's atmosphere and its entire ecosystem is very complicated. One of the things that makes it more complicated is that there always has to be a certain amount of carbon dioxide that's released and it has to enter the atmosphere. This keeps the weather stable on the planet. The volcanoes do this job perfectly. At least they usually do and they release the right amount of carbon dioxide that our atmosphere needs. But how did volcanoes cause the entire planet to turn into a snowball? Around 700 million years ago, geologists believe that most of volcanoes around the planet started releasing basalt rocks. Basalt rocks are basically a type of filter that does not allow CO2 to be released from the volcano. They basically capture it just like a filter. What the basalt is doing right now is not allowing enough carbon dioxide to go to space and that causes the CO2 levels to go down. And when CO2 levels go down in an atmosphere, that's when the planet goes extremely cold and an ice age begins. CO2 is a greenhouse gas and nowadays we're very familiar with those. When there is too much greenhouse gases, that causes the planet to warm up. But if there is not enough, the opposite happens. When there is CO2 or any other greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, it absorbs a lot of heat 
and it does not allow it to escape and that causes the planet to start getting hotter and hotter. A lot of people say it's because of too much CO2 that nowadays a lot of people are saying climate change and global warming is happening. But let's go to several hundred million years ago where the basalt rocks are absorbing all the CO2 being released from volcanoes. Just like we said, this makes the planet start to cool off. And when you add a whole lot of time, it gets colder and colder. But the volcanoes are speeding up the process. And the reason for that is they're sending a whole lot of sulfur into space. Sulfur is a type of gas that doesn't allow heat to be absorbed or even pass through. So just imagine a whole lot of volcanoes throughout the planet releasing CO2 that's being absorbed by some rocks and they're pumping sulfur into space that doesn't allow heat to pass through it. We have made a complete video about sulfur on our channel if you would like to check it out. Not only does sulfur not allow heat to pass through, but they also don't allow light to pass. And that's what they call a nuclear winter. The skies are extremely dark, no light and heat gets passed through, and it gets extremely cold extremely quickly. You have to know that ice compared to water does not absorb heat like water. Water absorbs the heat, but ice reflects it. And when light gets reflected, that basically means heat is getting reflective. Another good example is a white and black car. Ice is like a white car and water is like a black car. And if you go in the summer and touch a white car or a black car, the black car will be significantly hotter than the white one. So this causes the planet to be a complete snowball for about 20 million years. After all that time, the volcanoes once again activate. But the basalt rocks are so frozen that they don't absorb the carbon dioxide like they used to. And that causes the volcanoes to pump all that CO2 to space. Slowly, the atmosphere CO2 levels rises and that causes more heat to be trapped inside. And this makes the surface of the planet start to heat up. Geologists and scientists believe that this process took about 15 million years. After all this ice melts, the creatures that were living inside the water got more and more complicated. And you could say this is when we go from single cell organisms to multicellular organisms. The only multicellular organism that survived throughout this were sponges. To this day, you can find sponges throughout the world and they're considered creatures that you cannot kill. The planet started to heat up and this caused the creatures on top of it to get more and more complicated and cooler. It's interesting because nowadays, humans are helping the heating up process because they're creating CO2 and pumping it into space. And that's why people are saying that the planet is getting hotter and hotter. What do you guys think?